Uh, we, we get a chance to play a team we played early in the year, uh, Auburn team. I think it was our second game on the road, and they – they took it to us pretty good. They shot the ball awful well. They made 11 threes, and uh, they, they built a lead at halftime. Uh, obviously, they had something to do with that, and I thought we did too. We turned the ball over 10 times in the first half. Uh, uh, I think that was a period where we were trying to outscore people during that particular time. So uh, in the second half, I thought we probably played them even, but we had such a uh, – they had a big lead that – we couldn't, we couldn't get over that hump. I thought we cut it to nine, uh, but obviously they bring a team that can really shoot the basketball. They spread the floor, and Harper is a guy that's having a tremendous year for that basketball team. And then of course you got a guy Bryce Brown, and, uh, and I'm sure everybody's familiar with him. A guy that's probably made more threes than anybody this year, uh, I think in our league, maybe in the country. And of course, and and he had a probably career high here two years ago, uh, or the two years, three years ago, he had a career high here. Uh, made I think eight or nine threes here, so he's someone that you got to pay attention to. Uh, has tremendous range and is a much improved basketball player. Uh, the leading scorer is Heron, uh, a young man that played well early in the year and, and is having a tremendous year for them as well. Uh, again, you look at Auburn's a team that uh, was predicted, you know, uh, uh, to finish, you know, in the lower part of our, our conference and they're leading. The, not only the conference, but they're one of the top teams in the country. So uh, it's going to be a tremendous uh, challenge, uh, opportunity for our guys to, to, to come out and, and defend a team that, that's playing well. I thought the Murray kid was an X factor for them. Uh, the first time out, we played them. Uh, they, they attacked us on the glass. They, they got wide open shots. Uh, uh, and they took advantage of our miscues. So it's something where we got to really clean it up in terms of the basketball. We got to be with them in transition. We got to find the, the guy that really shoot the basketball and make them drivers. Uh, and obviously, again, we got to rebound the basketball and, and get to the free throw line as well. They got to the free throw line at their place. Uh, so it's an opportunity for us to get better. And uh, senior night, we got six seniors, seven including JT Plummer, uh, some guys who, uh, especially the guys that have been here for four years when you talk about uh, – Trey Thompson and uh, Anton Beard. So I'm sure it's going to be a special night for them. And then you got Macon and Barford, uh, along with Orlando Cook, uh, Dustin Thomas, uh, guys who have come here. And uh, thus far, I think they've, they've, they've done a good job of representing our university. And, and I'm sure they want to go out in a fine fashion. So it uh, should be a great atmosphere. Uh, late Tuesday night game, uh, uh, great opportunity for our fans to uh, to really uh, bid a good farewell to these guys and, and thanking them. Uh, so I, I think it's an opportunity for them to come out and thank them personally, you know, for, for being a Razorback. Yeah, Mike, how would you – I know these guys came at different times as seniors. Some have been here four years, some two. I guess uh, Dustin's been here three. But how would you sum up their impact on the program? Just how emotional is it going to be? Because, you know, some schools don't even have senior nights anymore, and, and having six is, is kind of a rarity, I imagine. Well, it'd probably, it'd probably be good not to have one. Like you said, it's going to be emotional because when you talk about Trey and Anton Beard, you know, those guys were babies when they came here. Uh and, uh, and they've been uh, very instrumental, I think, in the success that has taken place. Uh, but I've seen them grow from young boys to, to almost young men, you know, and uh, they've had some, some, some ups and downs along the way. But I think they've, uh, they've stayed, they've had the stay in power. And I think that's always big when you got that stay in power. And uh, we're seeing them maturing and, and trying to become leaders for this basketball team. Uh, Dustin Thomas, this is his third year here. And uh, and even him coming in, you know, he set out a little bit his first year uh, for a semester. And in the last two years, we can see him now really starting picking up all the, the things that we, we try to embark upon our kids, you know, on and off the floor. Uh, all these guys are in position to graduate. Trey has already graduated. Uh, then you look at Barford and Macon, two guys that came here as real herded, uh, along with Cook. They came as herded uh, JUCO players. And, you know, the stereotype is it takes them a while to, to come in and get acclimated. It takes them a year. But those guys were on the fast track, especially Macon and Barford. And uh, they certainly have impacted, you know, our program. They're, they're known not only in the, around the state but around the country by what they bring. And I think uh, that's a tribute to those guys coming in and, and, and fitting in with, with this group here. That's not easy to do, especially when you got that many seniors and you got that many new faces coming in. The only two guys we had coming back were C.J. 
in uh, Adriel Bailey. And so now all the other guys are new guys. So, uh, and Orlando Cook, uh, he's a guy that uh, obviously in his role, he's, he's, he's done a pretty good job, had some, some real bright moments. And uh, you know, then he had some moments where he hadn't played as well. But still yet, he's had that staying power. And I think that's the thing you commend them about. And they're all in position to graduate. And I think that, to me, is the ultimate when they graduate. Just as, how do you feel that they've compensated for losing Macklemore? Just kind of what, what have they done to recover from him? It's, it's amazing when adversity comes. I mean, you look at that basketball team. They lost two guys early, the poor four kid uh, and, and the big kid. And they just rally around each other. And since uh, they lost Macklemore, I think Spencer has been that guy uh, that's kind of gotten in the forefront. He's got a bigger role now uh, as well as the, the young kid, Okeek. O- o- Okiti, I think it's Okiti. He, he's really, really good. Uh, the young freshman, he, he's stepping up. And I think they've been, you know, uh, size-wise, they've been mismatches for people. You know, they play small ball. And, uh, and of course, Bruce likes to get up and down the floor. And they're a team that shoot a bunch of threes and attack that basket and get to the free throw line. That's what they do. And they do it in an aggressive, aggressive fashion. So I just think it, it's kind of spread their wealth a little bit more without McLemore. He was a shot blocker. He was more of a defender for them. Uh, who added some offense, but uh, they made the adjustment. I think that's that's a credit to them. I think they rallied around each other. Hey, Mike, Auburn's you know obviously playing for a championship, and if if they beat you guys, they're they're going to clinch the title. Um, just how, how do you feel about that? How motivated do you think they'll be? And and just obviously you don't want somebody to win a championship on your court. You know? I think both teams be motivated. We want to be motivated. We want to protect the home court. Uh, we want to get better. We want to continue to play good basketball going down this stretch. It's a big game, and I'm sure for them it's a big game as well. Uh, they're in position to win a championship, and so. Uh, but but our our mindset has always been, you know, the next game up, and and Auburn happened to be that team. It's a team we played early in the year, and. You know, they won on their home court, so we want to make sure we take care of business on our court. And um, you know, Daryl and Jalen both are right uh, on the cusp of 1,000 points. I mean, they're obviously going to get it at some point. They might get it tomorrow night. What do you think about those two guys both having a shot to get 1,000 points maybe in the same game? Uh, you know, it's uh, – I think, you know, if you ask those guys, I think they're more interested in, in us winning coming out and playing good basketball. You know, if the scoring takes place, that's, to me that's all only a plus. And this tells you, the, uh, I guess, maybe the consistency uh, that they've had since they've been here. Uh, you know, when you come to a place and you don't do it in less than two years or within two years, and we've had some couple other guys who do that. Uh, but I think it's, it means more when you win. It means more when you win, but it just tells you about them being consistent. They came here as as guys that can put the ball in the hole, and uh, I think they've proven that. And we wanted them to continue to prove it. Sure. Mike, it seems like you know down the stretch here, there's more of a blue collar mentality. It just seems like at both ends of the floor, these guys are starting to embrace that. We saw that wholeheartedly against Alabama. Worked the ball inside out, offensively, defensively, hit the glass. Well, that's what we've been preaching all year long. You know, be a team that's going to share it on offense, move the basketball. Uh, On defense, we're going to trust. You know, when you play pressure defense, guys are going to get beat. You got to got to hope somebody's going to be over there to rotate and, and fill in. And I think we've uh, it's something we preached and preached, and and even more so when we start trying to win with offense. Now all of a sudden, our, our bench start playing, and you got those kind of guys coming off there, and uh, and you can see that weak link. If, if a guy's not out there busting his tail defensively, uh, because I think it puts us in position to create some offense. Uh, but when you talk about guys like Darius uh, Hall, or Gabe, uh, uh, we saw Adriel out the other night, uh, uh, Dustin Thomas. I think you're right. We get more blue collar guys out there. Trey Thompson, he's a blue collar kind of guy. So you get enough of those guys out there. Uh, now you make it a little difficult for people to score on you. And now you're playing to me with balance, more balance, as opposed to trying to win with offense. Now you win with both, with your defense and your offense. And I think we got some guys that are capable of scoring, but now we just got to be able to stop people. But uh, I, I just think our bench, those guys are coming in, and, and then the other guys are, are are stepping up and doing their thing. Anton Beard, I think he's more healthier now. You know, for a while there, he was hurt. I mean, he was really hurt. But I think he's starting to get uh, get get more uh, that quickness, that 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 that, uh, that bounce back in his step. Yeah, Mike. We know you know senior night's always emotional for the players and their families. What, what what's it like for you? 
Well, with this group here, it's going to be uh, uh, it'll be a special night. Like I say, it's it's it'll be hard to think that this will be the last game to play. Uh, uh, they, they, they've done a tremendous job since they've been here. And uh, this year, when you think about you know the, the games, the way the games have ended, how they went, uh, you know the emotions up and down. Uh, you know, uh, let's say with a guy like Darrell, I mean, uh, he starts, he don't start, he come off the bench, he plays some of his best basketball. Uh, like I say, uh, uh, for me, you know, it'll probably hit me. Uh, right as I get ready to go out before they start, uh, uh, that these guys came and uh, they came to play for for this guy, for this coach, and um, they, they left everything on the floor each and every night. You know, some nights we were disappointed, a lot of nights we went home happy. And uh, but through it all, uh, I think uh, when I talk about family, these guys are be a part of my family for the rest of their life, and they know that if there's anything that we could do for them, uh, we're here for them. And they will be Razorbacks forever. I, I think that's, to, to me, the greatest gift from a coach or uh, the greatest gift a coach can get is to see the kids go out and be productive citizens. They, they finish what they started. You know, he talks about he's had his ups and downs. We, we, we know what he's talking about. Um, how do you think he's handled everything? He said he thinks he's matured a lot. Just what's, what, 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 And he said he knows he probably hadn't lived up to expectations on the court. What do what, what you thought about his time here and how he's handled stuff? I, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's everybody goes through different trials and, you know, and, and whether you talk about trials and tribulations throughout their life and uh, uh, adversity, uh, good and bad. And that shapes that person. And I think for him, uh, I think he sees that, you know, there's more to life than, you know, uh, uh, than games. It ain't just about games. I think there's a life out there. And I think he's learned. He's mature. He really has matured. And uh, he's doing well in school. And knowing that, you know, that degree is going to be there forever, something that no one can take. You, basketball, you can deflate that ball tomorrow, you know. But what have you got after that? And so I think it's put some some organization in his life, put a little discipline in his life, and uh, and I think he's going to be better because of it. I really do. He's he's part of a, a group. He's part of a brotherhood. He's brother, part of a family. You know, a lot of guys don't have a chance to do that. And I'm talking about true in, in, in this kind of environment. So uh, you learn so much, so many things, and uh, and I'm sure that's the things that he'd probably be thankful for. You're playing a ton. Some some coaches would say, "Well, he's not he's not starting. He's not a star. I'm going to cut him loose." What was it about Orlando that made you want to you know keep keep uh, you know being there for him? I think he's a good kid. I think he's a good person. I think he's got a good heart. I think you know even as he sat there and hadn't played, he's still about this team. He always talks about this team, coach. Whatever. I, I got a text from him. You know, probably the day after the Alabama game, coach. I'm still going to help us. I'm going to help us. And uh, when, when a guy does that, that tells you he's still – he's into the team. Anything else? One more right here. Were you kind of surprised at how efficient Adrio was the other day just considering he hadn't played a whole lot recently? Say it again now. Uh, Adrio, just how efficiently he played against Alabama considering he hadn't played a whole lot. Uh, no, I, I wasn't surprised. You know, I just – you know, he was hungry. I know that. He hadn't played in a while. And, uh, but he got sick. I mean, he was sick. He was weak. I mean, it, was, it takes a while for you to get that pop back. And, uh, and he seized the moment. He got the opportunity to go out there, and, and he took advantage of it and just utilized his experience of uh, his quickness, his athletic ability. He lost a few pounds. Uh, uh, but but it, it, didn't, it didn't shock me. You know, it, it's you know, like I said, a guy could go from not playing to playing and who knows and go to start. And uh, it's, it's not about the minutes that you get. It's what you do with those minutes. And uh, he played efficient basketball for us. And, and it was much needed, too.